welcome to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles, where we are better together than separated. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to another edition. We sit here down at the mm-hmm. selfie shop, you know, with more than a coach podcast, you know, uh, BV alumni, their cats. Uh, I mean, Brit, I mean, uh, <laughs> outside, outside. Oh, BV, it should be called. <laughs> Bridgeport, Bridgeport Bearcats, you know, football and basketball. He holding down his own podcast. And um, today we want to talk about the time that he did in the military, you know, because it seemed like he's someone that experienced real war. And we have a lot of war that's going on in these streets. And I just want to talk to him about his experience in Desert Storm, talk to him about firearms, How can we have more firearm safety around here, you know, so we can kind of like stop a lot of these deaths that's going on, you know. So first and foremost, man, I want to say thank you, man, for coming to join me today. Down here at the Selfie Shop, man. Make sure y'all get down here to Tanisha Brooks, man. Come and support the Selfie Shop, you know. So um, what's been going on? How podcast life been treating? Man, you know what? It's going pretty good, man. Um, we're getting ready to start back the Mr. and Mrs. Marshall podcast, uh, July 28th. You know, we had shut down for a while while she'd been sick, and she ready to get back at it. So we're going to jump back on that bike and do that. But uh, more than the coach, still growing, still, you know, doing what I got to do and hoping I'm making people happy, you know. So how you find time to do coach basketball? Mm-hmm. Football. Then you was doing security for a minute too, wasn't you? Yeah, I'm still security. You're no. still doing security, yeah. you know. Still doing it. And 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 you run like because I have looked up under your name. You got Kevin Marshall. Then you got more than a coach podcast. Then you got Mister and Mrs. Podcast. And yeah. I was like, well, what the ones? Because I know more than a coach podcast is what have your this mm-hmm. is the sports show. Sports show. Mr. and Mrs. Podcast mm-hmm. is the relationship show. Mm-hmm. And then you got your own Kevin Marshall, which is just the sports. I mean, just for like the school. Yeah. Well, actually, like um, right now, it just broke down to just the Mr. and Mrs. Marshall. And then the more than a coach, it was started out with sports. But man, you know, doing this podcast thing, you venture out to a lot of things. So it does show that I am more than a coach because we talk about life. We talk about things that's going on. You know, there's right. only been two things I really ain't touched on on my podcast, and that was uh, religion and politics. You know, try not to go in too many of them wars because yeah. the way people are today. And I, I like to say I keep my my thoughts to myself, but you know, sometimes you have to. It, could that be? Is do you think that's what's stifling us because of the mm-hmm. information and we as podcasters we as journalists sometimes i say that to myself then i speak it to somebody else and then Mm -hmm. they'll say well that's what you got a podcast for (laughs) so you can speak your thoughts Mm -hmm. you know and you can share with the people what you really feel yeah and you know we can but i just think sometimes man that's a lane that like if me and you off Uh that's we'll discuss that then yeah you know it's just you don't want to rub people the wrong yeah, a lot of people. You yeah. know, people already look at us wrong. Very and, sensitive. Yeah, and you're right. Society is very, very sensitive. And even with guys that I work with, like I tell them, they speak their views all the time. And I was like, well, you know, and I say this, all of them lie, simple and plain. Mm. They don't like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's true. Whether you red, you blue, or you in between, all of them still lie to us. Right. Because at the bottom, at the end of the day, to me, None of them coming down, helping the people that it really matter. And so I was talking to Terracina Jackson. We just did a podcast. Mm-hmm. And, and I know the city been going in, in a certain direction mm-hmm. for, the, for a while with Saginaw, mm-hmm. right? A lot of them been interested in pastors. A lot of them been interested in different entrepreneurs that they favor, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, 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 it's good that you said what you said, because I think it's time for them to come down from that to the grassroots people. That's right. You know, and Terracina said that we need people from all sides of town that grew up in that area that's, that's harmonious with everybody mm-hmm. from the north side, like somebody that grew up on the north side, somebody that grew up on the east side, south side. 
and th that's in those grassroots and that's can that's cool with everybody mm -hmm. so they can make it safe for other people from other sides of town to come over there to try to try to call try to start a truce yeah you know with all yeah. this killing and and, and and a lot of this beefing that's going that's on because it got to be some type of resolution at the end of the yeah. day and that's what i wanted to talk to you about because I know you got a lot of training in, in, in firearms and, and marksmanship. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You you went to the military. Yeah. So tell us tell us a little bit of uh, what made you decide to go to the military mm -hmm. and how was the experience when you very first got there? Man, well, coming up and going to BV, um, we really didn't have a lot of guys that had ambition going to college. Don't get me wrong, there was a lot of people that went to college from my class. But I think the majority of my graduating class went to the military. Okay. My father did years in the military, two tours of Vietnam. Um, he was an 82nd Airborne. So growing up, seeing him, I knew where my path was going. You know, and it's, it's funny you ask this. I just talked to a guy the other day about the military. I played around on the test, scored high on it, you know called me and I knew I was going. So as soon as the week after graduation, I was gone. Eight years, came home three times to Saginaw. Um, but it was something that I needed as a young man because I was going down the wrong road as a juvenile, you know what I'm saying, lost. But when I got in the military, man, it gave me direction. You know, I ain't gonna lie and tell everybody it was easy because I got broke down that first three months being there. Mm -hmm. You know, where it, it broke me down to the point where drill instructor called my mother, you know what I'm saying, and told her about uh, the effed up kind of guy I was. Mm -hmm. And basically that woke me up. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, damn, if he can tell my mom this, I ain't got nothing coming. Mm -hmm. You know, and then what my mom did, it kind of like set the tone for me. She said, you better do what you're supposed to. I hung the phone up, bro. Mm -hmm. So as a 17-year-old, hearing that, like, damn, I'm in this faraway place, got all these crazy people yelling at me, making me do things. And to hear my mom say that, which growing up, how we grew up, that was normal. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I just took it on the shoulder, like, you know what? Go make the best of it. And in the Army, we got this saying, be all you can be. And I went and was all I could be, you know? Mm -hmm. So when did the first time... Did you have did you have to a firearm before you had got to the military before? Did you um, did you have any knowledge about firearms? Just shotguns from my granddad's man. Nothing, you know, no major gun situations. Mm -hmm. You know, granddad's taught you how to shoot shotguns. So mm -hmm. I was shooting twelve gauges and thirty out of sixes though. What was the first biggest gun that they taught you how to shoot? Um the one we carried every day was an M sixteen. Mm -hmm. You know, they taught us how to break them down, fix them back up within two minutes and, you know, and prepare your own weapon. Cause if you didn't fix it back, right. Bang, backfire and blow up on you. Then that's on you. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm asking him this is because like I say, you know, he didn't been on a tour. He didn't been the desert storm, mm -hmm. you know, one of the, one of the greatest, one of the most deadliest tours any, any mm -hmm. military um, soldier can been on. And we got a lot of war that's going on in the streets. Mm -hmm. We need more firearm safety. We need more, um, you know, we need more gun safety. We need more control on these guns. That's why I wanted to sit down with him to talk to him today about some of the things that we can do to probably implement firearm safety and more gun control with the guns in Saginaw, Michigan and the surrounding areas. So one of the things I wanted to ask you was, how does military training prepare, prepare individuals for handling firearms responsibly compared to the lack of training seen on our streets? Hmm. It's the discipline with them. Number, you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Yeah, they teach us how to use them, you know, teach us how to protect ourselves with them. But it's a, you know, it's a discipline. Even when I came home and got my carry permit, Going through that class, you know, seeing how they did it, it was kind of funny a little bit, but it was also true because you got to be in the right mind state, you know. And I talk to all my kids 
that have but it wasn't nothing like the military no. training when you came out here no. to get your carrier's permit no, it was nothing like that like like the handling of the weapon no it wasn't, was, wasn't taught to you like the handling of the weapon in the military no no and then it was different weapons so really the training outside was basically the laws you know where you can where you can't take them you know like if we went to me and you went into a place with over 200 people you know and they served alcohol we ain't supposed to have them on us you know what i'm saying so it's just little laws like that that you have to pay attention to mm -hmm. you know but as far as some of the safety that they did do mm -hmm. in there it was cool you know like i love the actual getting out shooting the tactical training we was doing right. on the outside because that brought me back to military mm -hmm. days so but i mean it's, it's a big discipline thing that that right. they do teach because you do have to be disciplined with it right because when you put your finger behind that trigger and you squeeze it you change your life as well as somebody else's mm -hmm. you know and i wanted to ask you because on that tour in desert storm mm -hmm. you experienced a lot of mm -hmm. death mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you know we you know i don't know if you can um mm -hmm. I, uh, disseminate it to us if you didn't you know then then they had to harm somebody yourself mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying Came yeah. back home. That was a goal. Do what you got to do to get back home. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I was in battle, in war. You know, in the middle of a tank battle in Basra. Right. So you had to do what you had to to come back home. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I knew at the end of that day that M16 that I carried every day, or that M60 sitting on top of the truck that we worked and trained with every day was gonna get me back home. So I made sure it was clean. And I used to tell people all the time, when we were over there, you seen people out there playing volleyball and all that crap, right? But when you turn around, what they didn't show, you seen brothers like myself sitting there with trash bags over our weapons, keeping them clean, you know what I'm saying? Because we wanted some things to work when it was time to use them. Right. Mm -hmm. So, like, how was your living conditions? Like, were y'all just mm -hmm. living in tents over there? Mm -hmm. Like... We're living in like tents. like six inch cots. Yep, six inch um wooden cots. You know what I'm saying? And um, it, it was crazy. You know, fighting off flies this big. You know what I'm saying? Get up in the morning at six o'clock, 120 degree weather. You know, so you're dealing with that. And then at night, it was cold in the Michigan nights. And so winter. what what the what the what the what y'all eating? What the food like? Or, you know what I'm saying? Man. What y'all? A lot of times, guys, when we first got there, we had guys sent home. And you got Spam, Vienna sausage. We was making gourmet meals with them. You know what I'm saying? And right. uh, But they had the uh, uh, meal-ready packages. Right. You add water to, and you see your pork chop rise up. Right. You throw them on the grill, on a little fire, man, and, you know, you ate. Have I, you ever experienced the ambush? Well, we woke up one. We had took over a place at night. I don't know if they called it in or not, but the next day we woke up, our own tanks were surrounding us because they didn't know it was U.S. soldiers. That mm. was probably the closest bad encounter that, you know, could have happened. Because other than that, it was kicking butt and taking names. Wow. Yeah. So what I wanted to say, because in both worlds, you've seen the impact on innocent lives mm -hmm. in these streets. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you got out the military and you seen an a, a, a impact on innocent lives mm -hmm. from fires when you was mm -hmm. in the military. So what I wanted to ask you, how does the lack of proper shooting training among young individuals contribute to the high number of innocent lives being lost mm -hmm. in the community? Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a deep question, yeah, because... You really don't want to see nobody using them in the communities unless you are protecting your home. That's what I personally feel. But we know what's going on in our city and surrounding mm -hmm. areas that they're carrying them. You know, and you got to be, you got to basically have your head on the swivel, know where you're with. Cause right. These guys are carrying themselves, uh, protecting them, they sales and everything. But, um, man, just the, it's, it's hard, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know people that's been affected uh -huh. and you wish you could have a chance to talk to the person that was on the other end you know beforehand but it's like you kind of said you got to go back to leaders in the neighborhoods ogs in the neighborhoods 
people mm -hmm. that these kids look up to, man, just to talk to them and give them some advice. You exactly. know, that, that's what it really boiled down to because it ain't a whole lot of dads in the crib. Sometimes it ain't a lot of moms in houses, mm -hmm. but these kids need an outlet. And, you know, and that's what I was going to ask you because, like, on the world of mentorship with, with, you know what I'm saying, marksmanship training, like, mm -hmm. how important is mentorship and guidance from experienced individuals like yourself in preventing gun violence, like, among the youth? Personally, you know, with me, just talking to the people that I talk to and that I deal with, especially the young ones that I know they carry and do things like that, man, I just try to tell them the negative parts of what happened mm -hmm. when you pull that trigger. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I didn't see kids, you know, ask me, well, don't you? Yeah, but it's a, mm -hmm. you got to put me all the way at the end before right. that thing come out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And it's just the point that dealing with our youth, man, is just being truthful with them, man. So what do they tell you in the military about alcohol and a firearm together? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, because that's the thing about a lot of these killers and shooting around here, you know. Mm -hmm. Alcohol make you mad. Somebody done pissed you off. Mm -hmm. Then you got that firearm right next to you, and you have no control over your, your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. You're not thinking rationally. Somebody just pissed you off, and here you is. You want to shoot them. And a lot of times, I say a lot of people don't need to have that gun on them when they and, and, and have those Dracos because when they're drinking, you know, they act stupid with it. That's right. And that's a, just to be honest, they go back to that discipline rule, man. If you you know you carry, why put yourself, and that's the other thing, why put yourself in situations where you know you might have to use it? You know, I'm not going to go to this social, this little gathering if I know it ain't my crowd. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then you got to up that to protect yourself or like you said, just be felt disrespected. As long as you don't touch me, man, where I feel threatened, harm, mm -hmm. then I don't have a chance, you know, don't even have right. a choice to use it. Right. You know, you ain't coming trying to kick in my dough. Right. You know, like we used to say as kids, sticks and stones break my bones. Those are words. It never hurt. Yeah, you hurt. say whatever you yeah. want to, too. You know, just don't try yeah. to physically harm me because I got to yeah. protect myself. And the sad part is, like you said, when you got that alcohol in you, man, that stuff will consume and control me. You know, I've seen it from close friends and loved ones. And you have to talk them down, you know. And it's just about having good people with you, too, mm -hmm. in your corner. It's what you and I both know it's people that right. geek some of them up and right. do the things that they do. Right. You know, and it's not right, but right. it happens. And then you got, you got these guys, they shoot these guns from... Hmm. 100, 200 feet away mm -hmm. in these neighborhoods. You got the mechanic, he fixing on the car. Mm -hmm. You got the girl or girl who going to school. Yeah. You know, you got the <laughs> lady who waiting on the bus. And here it is. He come, it's not like he's a sniper mm -hmm. or anything yeah. because he haven't had any sniper exactly. training. And he <laughs> just come through loosely shooting. Yeah, with no remorse. With no know. remorse. And, and that's the sad part, man, you know. That's the part that hurts. And that's what I'm saying about a lot of these guys that's going to prison is not even in prison for the target they're trying to shoot. Mm. They're in prison for a innocent, lot of innocent yeah. bystanders. And mm. I know, even though, like, and I know your heart, you know what I'm saying, goes out to, like, when you see the innocent bystanders. Oh, yeah. But let's talk about a little bit, like, the innocent bystanders that you've seen get killed. Mm. And, and, and that you seen get blowed up and mm. that you seen get bombed. You know what I'm saying? And 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 you had to you had to suck that emotion up and you had to carry that emotion with you and, mm. and, and complete your mission. Like man. like like talk a little bit about that, man. How high wrenching was that? Man, you I can tell you. Cause you didn't seen both sides. Innocent yeah. people in the streets yeah. getting killed and innocent people dying yeah. in war. Real I'm war. Tell you, um, I really don't talk about it a lot, but there was one incident, man. We were, you know, dealing with combat, and it was a truck. Cars was on the highway. They trying to get out of there, and a car got caught. 
and it was a like a fruit truck. It was a man, old man, a lady, and a kid. You know what I'm saying? And to see that they got hit in the middle of all that, man, that probably was one of the hardest things I seen over there because I seen a kid, you know, lose his life. You know what I'm saying? You didn't want to see an old man, old lady had nothing to do with that war, but just being out in the mm-hmm. middle of it, it happened. And I think that used to have nightmares about it all the time when I first came, because you know, I won't get too detailed on it, but it was bad. You know what I'm saying? And I got to see that. So, Coach, you seeing the murders, the 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 violence and the and the and the malignant things going on over there. You know how and then you got kids over here seeing their friend get killed, mm. their family member get killed, different people getting killed, and no psychological therapy is being implemented. Mm-hmm. Like when you guys came out the military, was there any psychological therapy that was implemented mm-hmm. to help you deal with the things that you saw? Mm-hmm. Like the deaths that you seen, like mm-hmm. like Talk a little bit about that. Yep. When we first came home, first thing they make you do to deprocess, you go to, you know, see a site. And in that process, uh, you sitting there, you talking to them, man. And a lot of us, and I admit I was one, you blew it off because I just want to go home. You know what I'm saying? But then later on in life, we dealing with it still. You right. know what I'm saying? With the PTSD real bad, um, nightmares all the time. You know, as a kid watching my pops go through it, I never knew what he was talking about. Then as I went through it, and then I never give me one of his men him had a conversation on it. And he asked me, he said, Do you see people that you've seen lost your life when you sleep? I'm like, Yeah. He said, How'd that make you feel? It's it's crazy. So like you said when um these people here in our city go through that like one of my players lost his life, you know what I'm saying? And and then you got a lot of players that's losing their best friend. Yeah. You know, a lot of players that's, you know what I'm saying, losing their man yeah. to, to gun violence. I got kids you know? now, man, they're struggling. Still to this day after losing a, uh, one of my former players a few months ago. You know what I'm saying? And I try to talk to him, try to give him input. He won't accept the help from other people. He'll listen. But and, it's, and, it's hard. And and the thing about it is that a lot of these kids, because of that's why sometimes I I I, I get mad at the culture mm-hmm. because it's this rich life. They think everybody's supposed to be mm-hmm. living, and then you know when really everybody in poverty. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to if you experiencing trauma, if you experiencing pain, if you experiencing any type of poverty in your life. You can come up to me and talk to me about mm-hmm. it. You ain't got to play this certain role or, or carry this certain image yeah. like you always got it or like you can always handle it mm-hmm. all the time. When I know you hurting and I know you For empty real. in the inside. When you just was in the military, when you just was on the tour in Desert Storm, seeing people getting killed and you coming over here and you had to get the therapy to be able to help you um, cope with life and be mm-hmm. able to get back to life. And, and now you got students and players and athletes that you know that's dealing with the same thing, seeing mm-hmm. their best friend get killed, seeing their family member get killed. So it's like y'all bonding all in. It's like uh, uh, it ain't called trauma. It's called something else. Like y'all, y'all bonding with each other in mm-hmm. a way that it's the kids is not even mature enough to even understand yeah. yet. And some and sometimes you can't talk to them the way you really want to because you don't want to trigger them to get in a mentality mode where I got to go retaliate. You know, no, I'm trying to help you through it. Right. Not trying to talk you in a go, you know, take up for your man. You know what I'm saying? And I had to learn that even when, like, when I lost a cousin, you know, it was just like hard because a part of you, you want to go and, man, let's go do this and do that. Then on the other side, you got to think about it. You know, his family hurting as well as the family that lost. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they losing their child, right. you know, to prison or whatever. So it's it's tough, man. And I know as you was over there, you know, you developed a lot of relationships and you develop a lot of friendships. And 
these 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 guys became your brothers yeah. because you know when you out there in war you know you got to protect you know you mm -hmm. got to look out you know mm -hmm. you know one of y'all sleep one of y'all got to stay up That's right. the other one you know how yeah. did how did that go man? man it was tough you know especially like what like what kind of shifts y'all was on when y'all yeah. sleep it was somebody like, had to it was like an eight hour shift though man you know it was like going so you had to sit there just for eight hours yeah, with your gun and just protect and the air while everybody you know, while the rest of the total yeah. sleep Yep. And you might have about like 20 of us up, 20 sleeping. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then vice versa, and then flip. You know, it was just like, you know, going to a real job, even out there in the world. Yeah. You know, and what I was going to say is that I know some of them brothers didn't make it back with you. Mm. Yeah, we lost two. You know, I lost two people. On. One was a airplane, a helicopter pilot, you know, and he was a cool guy, man. He used to fly us around just on fun, you know what I'm saying? On GP and then when all the war kicked off and stuff, man, he ended up uh, losing his life, man. You know what I'm saying? So, and then we had uh, another person veered off when he shouldn't have, grabbed something that he shouldn't, you know, and it was, you know, detonated. And it was a bomb. It was a bomb, man. Wow. So, you know, but other than that, for the most part, most of our guys came back. You know, I mean, physically you come back, but mentally, you're not. Yeah. You ain't always there. So, how long or in some aspects so how long did it take you to really get back acclimated with life mm -hmm. man as to where like or do you still have some 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 residuals some remnants of mm -hmm. that today that you still dealing with from being yeah. in desert storm yeah i still deal with it a lot man good thing about it i got a couple partners that was over there that we you know kind of communicate and kick it with and talk but man, you know, you have your days, man. Some days you up, some days you down. You know, mine kind of weird. I like watching military movies. Mm -hmm. Don't know why, but it brings me back to that. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like a settling thing for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But one thing it gave you, it gave you a a, a, a self-determination, oh, yeah. a definite chief aim drive oh, yeah. in life, man. So no matter what you're going through, man, you got a lot of things that you're doing, man, to occupy your mm -hmm. time, to occupy your mind, mm -hmm. man, as to where you can put that to way the in the burner. back. That's right. You try to put it in the box, man. And, mm -hmm. you know, then like you say, when you had to go to your therapy or you go talk to your counselors, man, they, they like bringing that stuff up, you know, and I'll be mm -hmm. like, I won't do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they kind of force and force, but. It's just yeah. can't do it. It's like yeah. that Pandora box and they keep it right. closed. Yeah. You know. So as a ex military um soldier and uh ex marksman, I wanted to ask you, um, what policy changes or community initi initiatives do you believe could make a significant impact on reducing gun violence in our communities? I'm gonna be honest with you, when it comes to our communities, you gotta give these kids something to do. You know, I'm talking about open back up. We, we got to have more than the BV Center. I know we got the NAVE back now, you know, but it's things like that, you know, they're giving out free camps. You know, you have coaches like Coach Dawkins come in and give a free camp to the kids. The NAVE people doing a great job mm -hmm. with the stuff that they're doing over there. You know, we got to get places back. I know they was doing some stuff at First Ward, you know, Already always doing things with kids over there. Mm -hmm. so we got to have stuff for these kids, especially our smaller ones. Mm -hmm. That way they don't veer out mm -hmm. in the streets looking up to the mm -hmm. negative stuff, man, and opening the doors for a lot of these youth. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of them just need direction, bro. Mm -hmm. They need direction. If they can get that direction, I think it'll be a big a start of something new. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I know when I was coming up, we had recreation. Mm -hmm. We had holding swimming pool. Yeah. We used to jump out the swimming mm -hmm. pool, catch lunch coming up there, go eat lunch, yeah. go back, get in the swimming That's pool. Right. We had popcorn, everything, man. Yeah, it, you know, bro. we had the village skating ring, and mm -hmm. I just think about it that you're right. There is nothing for there the kids. Not. There's, so what do they do? They imitate what they see on TV. But do is is that is that a bottom thing? Is that a top thing? Is that a leadership mm -hmm. thing, or is that a community thing? Well, it's got to start at the top of the communities. You know what I'm saying? The leaders got to be the ones to say, we need this back in our community. We need this back. And it's in all communities. And, and it, it actually start with our city. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Quit, 
looking good for these cameras and let's let's make a difference with these kids. So how do because everybody's so tribal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is my organization, this is my nonprofit organization, this is my church, mm-hmm. this is my LLC over here. And if you ain't been supporting my LLC, I ain't supporting your church. Mm-hmm. You ain't supporting my nonprofit, I ain't supporting your mm-hmm. your for profit organization. Like, how do we get to the point where we get to supporting each other and get out that tribal mentality? As to where we so against each other because you're not with this or, Mm -hmm. you know. I think it's about, it's still, once again, somebody at the top got to reach out to, yeah, Kevin, everybody else that's doing podcasting or whatever you Mm -hmm. want. And y'all need to come together and do this. Mm -hmm. You know, why y'all can't work together? And we work together, you know, but the thing is, like you said, a lot of people don't see it on the outside because they might not see us always, you know, out here mm-hmm. together. But if we get somebody that can, hey, I'm having this, I need you here. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And eventually I think it'll it'll help. But it's right. gonna be it's gonna be a hurdle to cross though. Right. Because it's like they say, a lot of people set in their ways. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. What as a because I, 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 you know, I want to get much as I can from you, you know, from your mm-hmm. military experience. What do you think? Because even when you're pulling the trigger in the military and you're killing, you're killing for your country, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but in the streets, these guys just killing to be killing. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, there's, there's, there's no purpose to it. Mm-hmm. You know. So what I wanted you to kind of kind of explain to us is like where do that is it some type of anger like when you pull in that trigger like what like when you have this this apparatus in your hand do it just make you angry I mean what is it that mm-hmm. like that that it does to 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 wire the mind to make you so angry to to yeah. to kill that way in the military from, oh from from your, from like on, like from what you've been seeing on the streets, like where do you think this anger come from? Like for for a it, for for a lot of these brothers to be killing their brother, what what do you think this the anger, the mentality? I think a lot of it could be man from upbringing, man, the lack of love, the lack of someone that somebody care for him. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what fuels a lot of the the young guys with this hate. That they have, mm-hmm. you know, it's one thing. Like I can look at some of these guys, and you just look at them in the eyes, and you just, man, I'm praying for them because you can see it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like when I was in the military, pulling that trigger, it's my job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But here, I think it's the love and the nourishment mm-hmm. that they didn't get. You know, because mm-hmm. even as a youngster, it was times that I didn't feel that. Mm-hmm. You know, I just didn't have a weapon in my hand. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We use these though. So as a so to be so you because you went to the military in order to be a train killer. Mm-hmm. And these guys out here is just picking up guns and they mm-hmm. just killing without mm-hmm. any training, without any discipline, mm-hmm. without any knowledge or marksmanship with guns, gun safety or anything. Yeah. If this keep happening the way the streets are going and and and, and us you know, black men killing each other like this, man. What is going to look like in the next sixty months, or, 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 or next ten years, five or ten years for us? Man, that's that's a scary thing. And you and you've been in the military, and you've seen people getting killed and killed and killed. So eventually, what a mm-hmm. town becomes destroyed. Yeah, a community mm-hmm. becomes destroyed yeah, from all the violence. You know, and talking to people that I know that stay down south, man, and. You know, in places that is off the hook, you know, Saginaw, we're a small city, but it's places that's outside of Saginaw, man. Like, I got little ones out in the shop, man, where you can't go places, you know what I'm saying? And because of the fear of not being able to come home. Mm. And in our city, man, and it's, I wish it would stop. I pray for it. And you we know. only have 42,000 people <laughs> here. Man. So it seems like the few that's here, we need to be trying to stick together as much as we really? can, man, because we don't got time to be oh, hating, really? disliking, to be disparaging yeah. to each other in any type of no, way. We don't. <laughs> and we, gotta, we just got to love on each other, man. And, yeah. You know, like one thing I learned listening to Dr. Uma, 
Yashin, I think that's his name. And it's a thing he say, uh, one, one on one or something, one verse one, mm -hmm. something like that. But it was like every time I speak as a black man and I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking for both of us. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And we got to get back to that, man. Yeah. Because it used to be that way. Yeah. You know, it used to be where all those brothers wouldn't hate on each other because of right. this or that. Right. Or the clothes you wear or the side of town right. you from. What they teach you about that in the military, like when you and your brother out there and y'all on the mm -hmm. death defying mission and, you know, you don't like, do, you, do they even teach that type of training in first the military? Thing first, when you go in the military, you're green. Ain't no black, ain't no white, ain't no brown. Yeah. All y'all see is each other, y'all want. And if you, you had a, like in one of my cases, I had a racial issue one time and the guy was ring hard at me. Call me the N word, you know what I'm saying? This was actually in Iraq. Uh -huh. You know, I flipped out. We get into it. He was ranked higher than me. But by the end of the month, I was outranking him because that's one thing they don't play. They don't play with race in there. Right. You know, because we all got to depend right. on each other yeah. to get back. You only want races, and that's, that's right. the human race. That's right. Y'all don't see different nationalities, no. color, skin. No. Y'all trained to be as yeah. one. And that's the same mentality, and that's the same format that we need out here. Mm -hmm. You know, because even in the Bible, they don't speak about different races in the mm -hmm. Bible. They only speak about one race, and that's mm -hmm. the human race. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing I'm saying about everybody has become so tribal now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And everybody is, like, taking sides. Mm -hmm. Then you have, and, and I wanted to, and I'm glad we brought this up because I wanted to talk to you about this uh, about politics, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because a lot of people are real, being real tribal right now. And, you know, and, 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 and it's like everybody's got to choose a side, mm -hmm. you know, when really we should be all together yeah. as one, That's you true. know, especially in politics, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? We should try to come up with some same policies as to where it can better the community. But what I wanted to ask you is, are you Republican or Democrat? Democrat. You Democrat. Mm -hmm. Do you think Joe Biden should step down? <laughs> uh, if you want to put his health in there, yeah, for his health reasons, you know what I'm saying? But whatever that man chooses to do with his life, he's going to do. Just mm -hmm. like whatever the other one Trump chooses to do, he's going to do. How do you feel about how you feel about the Supreme Court coming down with the oh, with the with the <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong with the with the saying that you know that he got immunity from all prosecution as a president. And then they take it off all job applications too. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a convicted felon, all that's got to be gone. Because right. if we gonna like you said, if we gonna do it for one, you gotta right. do it for all. Right. Because you know how can you justify that? Right. How can a man that was incarcerated go to somewhere and apply for a job, and that one question stop him from getting the job? Exactly. But this man can run for president. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's it's just to me, our world is in a messed yeah. up state, bro. Yeah, you know, I just—it's a lot different from what you've seen and when you was in oh, the military. Yeah. It's a lot different, man. You know, and, and the thing that gives me—we at that second part of our life. You know what I'm saying? I look at my grandbabies, how they gonna survive, and what they got to go mm -hmm. through in this world. Because mm -hmm. in reality, it ain't about me no more. You know, it's what about saying? the grandbabies. It's about our future. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's about our future. Yeah, so we're going to get out of here, man. We got a couple more questions to ask more than a coach podcast, hmm. you know, before Speaking we get out. Grandbaby. <laughs> oh, grandbaby, call it right now. So listen, um, I wanted to ask you, what was one of the most defined, death, death defined situations you was in when you was in the military? The, about being surrounded with the tanks, bro. Because okay. all it had to be is one call and we was all gone. Right. You know, we sleeping already in your trucks. Right. And you wake up and you see these big barrels pointed at right. you. Right. Which we know what these barrels doing out there. Right. That was probably the worst one, man. Right. And just, you know, every day hearing your truck. Right. You know, hearing, <laughs> hearing them bullets bouncing on and off. Right. On. So do you think, is there any, what kind of um, community programs or community initiative initiatives that can be implemented that you believe are effective in addressing the issue of gun violence? I mean, if we go, because we know you're not going to stop it, but if there's somewhere we can give people training for free, you know, teaching classes on 
gun safety and how to use your guns. Not right. where you got to go pay 200 bucks and sit there for eight hours. Some people can't afford that. Right. You know, but if you can have a community center or even a church open mm -hmm. up or somebody open up a place where hey, you can come here and get this free mm -hmm. training on how to use your weapons, what weapons do to people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think people would appreciate that more and people would get a better understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that mm -hmm. that would be real helpful. And showing them what weapons do to yeah. people, yeah. Because really? like when you're shooting from 100 feet away, and you driving in the car doing a drive-by, you ain't seen what that yeah. weapon, what your bullet had done to somebody. And when you, when you, you talk know. about them Dracos and AKs, bro, right. them bullets don't travel here. They everywhere. Yeah. So, and then, trust me, I done seen what them things do in action. Yeah. And it's like, wow. Yeah. You know. So, at the end of the day, man, we just hope the city can come together, man, and, really? and, and, and reduce the, the gun violence, man, because we all we got as black men. Yeah. You know, man, you know, we two black men sitting here, you know, coming to you today to tell you, you know, put the guns down, mm. you know, be creative, you know what I'm saying, be imaginative within your mind. You wasn't born to be ordinary. You was born to be extraordinary. Mm. You know, you have to find something that you like. Think back to when you was a child. Think back to when you was in your teenage years as to where you won, where you were successful those are your inclinations those are who you are get back to that person yeah. so you can have start having some more success in life i've never known anyone that shot themselves to success mm -hmm. with a gun mm -hmm. and you have been in the military you have been in the highest profession you can go with a mm -hmm. gun and that's the military mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so if you really want to get some shoot a gun go to the military yeah. <laughs> that's for real. you know go to the military get you some, you go to real war get you some training you know, but we can't consistently be out here killing each other because at the end of the day, there's not going to be none of us left. Hmm. You know, True. you know, more than a coach podcast and seeing innocent victims get killed in streets of Saginaw, innocent victims get killed in, in Desert Storm. He see his friends get killed. He, he, didn't had, he didn't had athletes and players out here getting killed, hmm. you know, so he didn't saw both sides. You know, so if you ever see him and you need to link with him and, and, and you need some therapy in your life, man, come to him and holler at him, you know, because he's there. And as leaders in the community, we got to step up and be able to give the assistance and the, and the services that we need for these kids to be able to bridge their trauma. That's right. And I'm here. If you want to reach out to me, you can reach me at uh, MTAC underscore podcast at uh, gmail.com or yahoo.com, even on social media, more than the coach. I'm here to talk to you if you want to just talk rap. And I know some people that's doctors and psychiatrists that can help you if you need that. Yeah, because, man, we need some therapy in this city, man. Everybody has been impacted by the gun violence. Yes. Somebody, somebody, family member, friend, somebody associate uh, they worked with, you know, them all we all have been impacted by gun violence in the mm -hmm. city of Saginaw. It's time for it to stop. For real. You know, so let's put the guns down, man. And let's be more creative with our skills and our hands. You know what I'm saying? And let's get, let's get, you know, it's a quote that go, uh, you rather spend your time building yourself up instead of pulling the teeth out the world who doesn't care for your existence. Mm -hmm. You know, so spend time building yourself up. I know the world is hard. Sometimes you wake up, it's hard. It's bad. You're in poverty. You don't have the money you, you need, but you got to keep working. You don't have the people there. You got to build yourself up first. Once you build that confidence and that self-esteem up, then you will be able to get, climb out of that poverty. You know what I'm saying? You will be able to get to that success that you want to get to. You know, so don't try to pull the teeth out the world every day. You're waking up, you're mad at something, you're complaining at something because something ain't going right in the world and you're grabbing your gun and you want to go kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? That ain't how life works, man. Listen, take your anger and take your, take your frustration out on the skill. Develop a skill, develop a talent, develop something that you like that can carry you far in life. Yeah. You know? So we're going to leave it right there. Yeah. You know, we want to thank more than a coach podcast, man, for coming in. 
giving us this great interview. And we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles, where we are better together and separated. Thank you guys for tuning in. Yes, sir.